So, you know, it, it's being driven by a bunch of different things. First, first of all, we needed a replacement for the Hubble. Um, yeah, know, that thing was getting old. You know, that it, thing was getting old. It, it, you know, but the, that the, Hubble telescope his, gave us incredible pictures all these years. But think about the historic repair job that Story Musgrove and, and the, the, the astronauts that did the repair yeah. on, on the Hubble Space Telescope. Yeah. That was completely unprecedented. To replace the optics, to, to put CoStar into the Hubble t Space Telescope. Sure. I mean, CoStar, Co in Incredible case people technology. Don't know, that was like an extra set of lenses inside of Hubble's uh, optics. And then there was a whole bank of computers that needed to be replaced. About the size of a, of, of a piano had to be Excellent. pulled down and a new unit had to be put back in. This had never been done before. In right, so let's just say they put up a $2 billion non-working device. They flew up with a couple of mirrors, well, fixed it, and it became the world's when you see a most incredible device, thing. It's, it's, it's kind of like well, it had blurred like poking fun at, at the people who developed it. Well, no, no, the we're, mirrors were off during transport. We're actually talking about like one millionth of a millionth of a millionth of a millimeter. Those off screw ups in the mirror. Yeah. Okay. I mean, but still, could, politically, it was a disaster. It was a disaster. You know, they were making fun of it. But then, you know, NASA's engineers and and the the team that went up to repair the the Hubble were absolutely heroic. Hmm. And, and it was funny because at the end of the whole job, yeah. Story Musgrove, the the astronaut who was closing the doors of the the Hubble Space Telescope at, at that the moment, end. yeah, the doors wouldn't shut. Oh really? They were like misaligned just a little <laughs> bit. Like so, imagine like you got a truck on the side of the road and the doors are a little bit off. You know, it's on a little embankment, and you go to close the doors and like you got to like you got to on the most important project. So of you know Earth. what he did? He took a wrench and just jammed it in the thing. Oh and said, man! Well, you know, e either we're going to have to have a whole other mission just to close the doors, and who knows what'll happen to it in between now and then. And he just like locked the doors down. And he was just like, "Yep, we're good, mission control." And everybody was just like, oh, Jesus. That did was he a do risk. What we think he just did? <laughs> that was a risk, and God was looking out for him at the yes, time. Absolutely. I mean, think about it. So that thing's been floating up there, and we needed a better device. Yeah. yeah. So the James Webb telescope came up. But I'd love, before we go into yeah, that, yeah, yeah. The, the, the whole space program for every country, it's a political thing. I mean, even the, the, the Russians. It's going funded to, by political right. engines. Sputnik going up first, and then the space race that took place. Yeah. yeah. Even today, isn't this space race just as um, uh, a big deal as it was years ago? No, I think. Now, but before you, you answer, right. I just want to say that right. is it possible that. Um, um, these flying objects that we don't know what they are yet. Well, we know what they are. Are being Guys, detected by different are. countries, yet we don't know about it as citizens because detecting those very flying objects is the secret we don't want to share with other countries. Well, okay, here's his, his his what here's the problem that I that, that I think is going on. The uh, what we just had recently. In, it was at the House of Representatives. Mm -hmm. It was a, 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 a hearing. I think it was the House. Was it the Senate? No, I don't okay. even know. Okay. Um, about UFOs um, and the things that our fighter pilots have been chasing around for the last yes. couple of years. The yes. Tic Tac, the Triangle. Um, and it got out into the public. And the government's like, well, okay, what do we do now? So let's have a hearing on it. Um, and basically, in the hearing, all of the experts said, we have no idea what the hell this is. Yes. It's not Chinese. It's not Russian. It's not American. It's not ours. It's not uh, European space agency. How do you know they're telling the truth? Come on. They well, may not well, be. Here's uh, the, thing. The, the government is now, now has a, a, a longstanding reputation of not telling the truth about anything. Mm -hmm. so yes. Let's just assume that the government is not telling us the truth, truth about, about anything at all, it. ever. Okay. Let, let's just say that. All right. Okay. What the hell are we looking at on these videos? In my opinion, you're looking at advanced hologram technology. Hologram? I believe that's, that's interesting. advanced hologram technology that's been in production and perfection for years. And the reason you could take those angles... It's because it's some kind of really advanced... So it's a projection. Projection. A 3D projection of something. I've seen What's pictures... What's projecting it in the middle of the ocean? 
I don't know about okay. this technology, but so, I don't believe those are objects because any being inside. Don't worry about the iPad. Okay. We're good. Okay, that's just his iPad. I am, but it's just um, um, just asking it. What but the those hell is going those on over here? those things are turning at such a speed that if you made a turn angle like that, any yeah. being inside you'd would be, disintegrate. You, you, any you'd being, be, you'd be like, you'd be what Jello turns into after dropping it off, dropping it out of uh, the space exactly. station, and it lands on cement. Exactly. Um, exactly. Okay, so. If there, if we're going to assume that there are no people or beings inside of the tic tac inside yes. of the triangle, and it's making these right angle turns mm -hmm. at like like five thousand G's, okay, yes, yes, which would like basically splat you against the wall on the yes, side, yes, and, you know, b break you down to your cons you know atoms. Right, you'd be disintegrated. Okay, then if it's let's just say this, if it's not a hologram. Then it's a, then it's some kind of drone from from somewhere. Drone All created right, so, by so you're breaking it down like you know, you're breaking it down. Well, if it's not this, it's that. Yes, then it, then it yes. can't possibly be manned. I don't think it's okay, manned. Right. It, it doesn't feel logical for that thing to turn at those angles to be manned by okay. either an alien form okay. nor a human. So so let's just say this: if it is a hologram, yes, or if it is a drone. Okay. If it was a drone, if it was my cell phone, yes. okay, and it did a 900G turn, yes. my cell phone would get crushed into atoms. But perhaps there's advanced technology that could take those turns and not have destructive behavior. Advanced technology we don't have on Earth right now. Or we humans. have that's not shared with well, us. Well, okay. So it, it might be something that they're playing with over at Area 51 or something or like that. Or Area whatever, X, that we don't know about. But I, there has to be technology out there that we have no idea what's going on. I mean, is it possible that all of a sudden, in the middle of nowhere, they, um, they, they, oh, oh, they put up the, this, this, all this, we landed on the moon, they put up the International Space Station, and there was this lull, right? There was a lack of interest. Mm -hmm. Where'd all that mm -hmm. money go? No, we went to secret pockets to do all this stuff. As a matter of fact, Sean McKenna, the famous hacker, found pictures of space program and emails that were written about special space programs that were funded with this money that disappeared. How about those documents that got released, uh, was it a couple of years ago? Yeah. With the, the Excel spreadsheet with a list of non-human officers. Yes. Okay. That wasn't that Sean McKenna's. I think uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I, that's what, that's what you brought up, Sean. That's yeah, why yeah. We got to pull a whole thing, do a whole I show. I mean, on we should do a whole time. show on that. Maybe I mean, next show we'll do a whole yeah. show on the UFO hacker, who currently has a, a, a media production company in Ireland right now. But now, I mean, now what we're dealing with today, we're dealing with Russia playing some pretty rough games. Exactly. When when it comes to what they're doing in space. In 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 concert with what they're doing in Ukraine. Now, yeah, let's uh, jump right into our news here. The yeah, good point. Thank yeah, you, sir. I, mean, I, I, I don't want to. Don't want to. Uh, um, oh, uh, yeah, Ed's news section. I don't want to get political about this. I don't care if you're a uh, a person who is on the right or the left. Or, you know, we could talk about the news um, as the news. Yes. And there are things going on. Uh, in Ukraine, whether you're okay with Russia invading Ukraine, if you think it's the worst thing in the world, um, here's some of the uh, the situations that are taking us, place. Yeah. Exactly. So, um, obviously, Russia in the invasion of Ukraine um, it conveyed intentions of destroying some of its satellites and hurting communication in the region and they've already before they do a, a physical. couple of satellites, right? We've right. already got like a whole right. bunch of space junk flying around. It's like 1,500 trackable objects in, yeah. from, from a... In this very article, you'll yeah. see that they test uh, exploded one of their own satellites to see how their um, laser or whatever works. Yeah, which so they destroyed one of their own. A bunch own, of space junk, a whole bunch of like space the Chinese junk. did a couple of years ago. Yeah, like literally people had to get out of the way. They were almost killed by this extra uh -huh. space junk that's not being watched like the other space junk. And this, this is something that is endangering the space station yes. and other interests of the United States that, it, that is space-based interests, let's just call it that. Yes. So what, what this has shown, what Ukraine has shown us as well as things beginning in the cyberspace domain be before the beginning on the ground, meaning that clearly um, it, is, it, is, it is logical 
for there to be a cyber attack prior to being a ground attack um, and the Ukraine attack shows that the cyber attack against uh, Viacent uh, was done the day before the beginning of the ground invasion. So it's that's Viasat. the company Viacent. I apologize. Yeah, it's okay. I have trouble with these names sometimes. It's okay. Uh, but they are the company that's that what I'm manages. Here for, man. Thank you, man. <laughs> Thanks. The, the, the translate because you speak clear Russian. So I, 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 I um, speak geek. <laughs> but this but this Viasat company manages the satellites. Yes. That are that are over there in Ukraine. So it made sense that they a month ago tested exploding one of their own, and they started hacking these satellites the day before the ground attack. And on top of that, on top of that, the the, the outages also knocked out over almost six thousand wind turbines in in Germany and Central Europe. Big deal. Which had a combined output of almost twelve gigawatts. Now, do you now, know what kind of effect that could have? That's that's like you know, that's like cutting off electricity to New York City. Like, like, w mm -hmm. without even giving a thought to like what would happen if you cut off electricity to New York City. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, forty thousand subscribers across Germany, France, Hungary, Greece, Italy, and Poland were affected by these attacks. I mean, that's a lot of people. Okay, just out of nowhere, all of a sudden, now people are without power. But people, people aren't thinking about satellite attacks. Wait a minute. Satellite You're attacks. You're talking about satellite, satellite attacks. Satellite attacks now? and people's power goes out. Now, could you communication in the cell of summer, phones are down? You out? If like all of a sudden your air conditioning went out, your fish tank, your you know, or let's say you know you you've got some medical needs, medical machines at sure, home. All sure. All of a sudden that's not working. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is this is just like not okay. Yeah. Um, you know, the, uh, so I just want to say that uh, in this article that you're looking at here, I um, highly recommend you check it out. They talk about how uh, people were warned about these satellite attacks. They were saying, oh, don't worry about it. It's not that serious. Right. Um, but in fact, it's happening, and it crippled a number of people. And it's showing well, us mean, roadway. Gee, Russia denying that something that they did is dangerous. Chernobyl. Uh, pardon me. Um, mm -hmm. You know that every time something happens behind the Iron Curtain, uh, even though the Iron Curtain doesn't exist anymore, it still does. Yes, Russia yes. will just say, "Ah, oh, it's no big deal. It's not a problem. Don't worry about it." You know, don't worry about the radiation falling on your crops and you know into your milk. Um, but li literally, they're setting the groundwork, or what we know about how these attacks are going to go. So I, I did not perceive personally that satellites were going to go first. That they know, were going to go after satellites, close communication, but so logical. It makes so much sense. And what we have right now is we've got an absolutely imbecilic uh, presidential administration that doesn't understand control, any of this. That does not understand the implications of these attacks. Does not understand the implications of why it is important to push back on these. Uh, people like Vladimir Putin mm -hmm. to make them understand it is a bad idea to do these things. Yeah. Take a look at the screen. Russian space capabilities. A few months before the cyber attack in February, February, Russia also destroyed one of its satellites in an anti-satellite weapon test, creating a field of at least 1,500 pieces of debris yeah, I floating that around yeah. that were endangering other people in space, and literally they had to get it out of the way before something serious were goes was going yeah. to happen. And moving things in space is no joke. I mean, we've got tons of satellites out there that are in geosynchronous orbit or, or some kind of synchronous orbit where they just can't be moved. Mm -hmm. you, they don't have the c capability to be moved. Right. They right. have the capability to stay where they are. And programming them to move out of the way of something is not in their software. Yes. So that has to, like it's a reprogramming. By the time you reprogram that satellite, it's already been destroyed by the debris. The so. trouble predictions is, is this is going to be a norm. Every time there's going to be an invasion, <coughs> you're going to have SATCOM networks that are affected by this in, in all kinds of nations. I mean, uh, I remember the, f the last POTS line being installed in this region. I mean, there is no more copper communication. POTS stands for plain old television. Uh, telephone There's service. There's no more copper communication. It's all digital that is completely susceptible to these it's funny you satellite attacks. Just, just yes. today, I cut all the copper lines 
out for telephone service out of my house. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah, sorry. I mean, just today. I would keep one just to just. To, What's the point? Yeah, I'm yeah. never going to buy one again. Yeah, I got a cell phone. Guys, take a look. An estimated eight million American reportedly rely on Satcom networks for internet access. Industries including aviation, government, the media rely on the satellite communication in the U.S. Now, gas facilities, electrical services. I mean, and Russia's figured out how to blow these out of the sky and turn it into debris, to debris, which is even more dangerous for ongoing attacks. Doesn't that make you attacks. feel really good right now? Yeah, um, and it's happening, and this was real, and people should joke about it, and it's something that's to be discussed here. Because the next move was highly interesting, right? So very, very interesting. Very interesting. So just to, to point out, that article was on July 6th. Okay. July 6th. So yeah, we have it was another... Like literally a month ago. Literally a month ago. We have another article for our audience here from July 26th. Okay, a couple of days ago. Which, which ties very interestingly into this next piece here. Let, let me pull this up. Isn't, isn't this um, you want to announce it or should I? Please go right ahead. Russia ahead. is announced its intention to drop out of the International Space Station after 2024. You believe that? Um, that's a huge deal. That's a huge deal. Because thanks to the Obama administration, and yes, um, you know, I, I don't care if I'm going to be a little political about this. The Obama administration nixed the space shuttle program yes. because they kind of felt it was not something that they wanted to invest in going forward. So what did we replace it with? Oh, let's give the Russians $10 million for every passenger we want to bring up to the space station. What could possibly go wrong with that? Along with that, U.S. also gave Russia the okay to start putting components uh, more and more uh, technology into the International Space Station. So now we've got components in the International Space Station that need maintenance that we don't know how to perform. That only they know how to perform. That's exactly right. Or they remove the modules completely. So, so that's the question now? now. What happens now? So let's take a look at this. Russia to drop out of International Space Station after 2024. So they're saying in this article, feel free, it's on ABC News, one of the most popular agencies to do a reporting yeah, out here. It's easy to remember, too. ABC. ABC. It's the first three <laughs> letters of the alphabet. Um, uh, Russia will be building its own um, uh, uh, orbit outpost, yeah. and they're pulling out by next year. Yeah, now, you know, what could go wrong with that? You they're know? saying this is, this is partially due to amid high tensions between Moscow and and the West over fighting in Ukraine, which you know, induced this to go faster. They were supposed to go till 2030, but they right cut now, it off six years early. Right now, companies like Symantec um, and other companies are not doing business in Russia. Meaning, if you're if you work for a, in multi, like a multinational company like I do, um, your servers that are running their technology will not be upgraded, will not be patched. Um, nothing will happen to those, n the, the company will not support anything. What happens when Microsoft decides to not support Windows? And believe me, there are gazillions of installations of Windows sitting in Russian data centers right now. Yes, yes. What happens when that when they decide, you know, out of wokeness or whatever? Oh, we're not going to do business with the Russians anymore. You know, yeah. You know. It will be impactful when this takes place in 2024. In, in other words, what I'm trying to get to, what I'm trying to say is, this insanity has to stop. Well, well, hold on. This ISS was a collaboration internationally. Was, They've decided because of of the Western. Uh, response to how they're dealing with Ukraine, that they're done. The they're ISS, going back into their own direction. The ISS was first and foremost an American technology. But, but it was a collaboration. It was a collaboration between a triad of th basically three com three countries and with a, 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 a few countries on the, you know, on the outskirts of that. The triad was the European Space Agency and the Russian Space Agency right. and the American NASA Space Agency. And with NASA taking the lead role, um, the European Space Agency 
took the lead role in some projects, uh, on, on quite a few projects going forward. Uh, the Russian Space Agency took the lead on a few uh, projects. But we, basically, they were, you know, they were asked to take the role, uh, lead role, and the European Space Agency had to pick it up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, now, you know, with... But the point is, it's all fallen apart. That good feeling, the point... But yeah, let me say, I think watched, Elon Musk is going to come into the rescue for this. Well, the, he's got a major play in this. I, I got to tell you, I don't know if you've watched the astronauts, the American astronauts that show you what's happening on the ISS. I forgot the young astronaut, the woman. And you see, I've seen time and time again, when the American astronaut on the ISS approaches those Russians, you can see there's some kind of, there's tension. a problem. There's tension, there's tension. right sure. there. Sure. So I imagine that over 30 years, the Americans, the Russians have learned their own technology. And if any one of them were going to pull out, it's like pulling an arm out of your body. It's like a critical <coughs> component that's going to leave a hole for everyone. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what do you, I mean, don't you think? I mean, they're look at these articles. No. They're trying to figure out, well, we'll be fine, but in answer to your to your statement, Chris, yes. I hope it's not Armageddon. Um, <laughs> It, I don't see it as Armageddon because uh, without electricity, we'll be better off. Yeah. I Different know. conversation, though. Yeah, totally, totally. You know, I mean, would, 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 would the world without media and some of this pressure be uh, different for us? Let's see where that goes to. But, but um, so I've thought about this. Is Armageddon, like Chris is asking, the downfall of our satellites and communication the way we have it now well, i think i don't think so the bibl in the biblical sense is the downfall of our society right but the downfall of our satellites does that mean the downfall of our society that's a good question because so much of our society is dependent on, on communication satellite and communication yeah, technology man, yeah i mean imagine what would happen if we couldn't tell what the weather was going to be yes. next week yes right i mean it's something we take for granted and we make fun of, you know, because, like, the weather's never right, right? Right. The weather guy's always wrong. But, you know, the, the truth is they're right 80% of the time, okay? And farmers depend on those forecasts to plan what they're doing outdoors in the fields to make soybeans and cotton and corn. I mean, yes. I've been into the yes. middle of Indiana. And, yeah, and, and see the averages and everything. If, if you've ever been to the middle of Indiana, let me tell you something. Hey, Jeannie, how you doing? I really think that the people of Indiana should take up corn. I think it would work out well for them. Corn? Yeah, corn. Okay. It, no, seriously, I'm joking because, like, when you get into the middle of Indiana, it is literally nothing but You've got a road going through cornfield, and, and from horizon to horizon, it is corn. And every once in a while, it's broken with horizon to horizon soybeans, and then more horizon to horizon corn. You, you're asking a very big question, and, I, and, I, and something incredible happened to me recently uh, that I'm researching, and I'll have an answer to this in the next few months. Is it possible through, through thousands and thousands of years, there was something called a manna machine that allowed humans to feed by the thousands without having to kill animals and do other things. It's possible that in our existence on this planet, there was a machine that used algae that fed large groups of people. Well, if there I, was, let's see. I think we don't have now. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I was taught in religion class, oh, animals are put on earth to, for us to eat. I don't know. I never felt comfortable for about that since the moment I I, know, I feel I heard very it, comfortable. You know? I made steaks the other night, <laughs> and I'm, I'm going to tell you something. I'm really happy with cows. You know, you guys are doing it right. But Rick, if you hung out that cow, became your friend, you'd feel differently about nope, it. You know, not in the slightest. <laughs> I would eat my cat if it tasted like a cow. I don't know. I mean, I, I'm, I'm not even kidding. I know? just I could like I could never eat my dog. I, in, in I could it, never if eat it my tasted dog. like the steak that I had the other night, <laughs> I could eat your dog every single day of the week. <laughs> well, I will say that chihuahuas in, were used oh, as the primary taco really meat. A yeah, it was used as oh, taco good. meat for many years, guys. Good God, good God. So, I'd rather so, kill myself than live with a chihuahua. So anyway, uh, just to get just, just to, to revert <laughs> back, <laughs> Russia's had it. They're like, listen, we're doing our own thing. Uh, again, like Sputnik... Like Mir, the original space station, this isn't the first time they went out on their own. I think the ISS and the plan to go to 2030 was a great plan. This war stopped them 
from proceeding forward, okay, and they're going to make so, their own. So now they're going to now they're going to get out of the, the International Space Station and stop the collaboration. It's this is you know I bet you Elon Musk was sitting in his den going yes yes uh, yes yes. But you will see through this article I'm sharing here and others, they're saying even experts, privatization has quite a benefit, sir. Yeah, yeah. And, privatization you know, has quite a benefit. Uh, yeah, without a doubt. Think, think about it. I mean, we've got a private company firing rockets up and in, in resupplying the space station yes. and, and bringing people out to the space station. That, that's, that in itself is amazing. Mm -hmm. It's not at all surprising. OK, I really think that instead of if, if I were to, yeah, to if I had Elon Musk in this room right now, I would actually give him a bit of advice. And that bit of advice would be simply this. Elon, don't worry about Mars so much. Start mining asteroids. Hmm. You want to start making you want to turn this into a, a real capitalistic venture where you can actually generate the money to get to Mars and God knows where else, mine asteroids. Make a machine to go Agreed. grab onto the side of an asteroid, mine some stuff <laughs> out of it, send it back home, have that be completely automated, and let me tell you something, that is nothing but money to be made. Uh, it's it's kind of like having a chiropractic. Well, they're saying that your average asteroid has uh, exponentially more minerals and gold and all kinds of things that that were ever found on Earth. I mean, mining minerals is is the is the uh, Sil you know silver the top titanium, you can get of all this gold. Stuff. Or, like, Aren't they working on that on landing stuff on I don't meteor? No, I don't know who's working on that, but it's something that should be worked on. I mean, there is no doubt in my mind that that is a, a top, top priority mm. for... Look, if you can make space, uh, space capitalistic, uh, make sense capitalistically... Make space capitalistically... Right. And it's like all of a sudden now, center. every time we shoot a rocket up there, we're making a billion dollars, mm. making a billion dollars mm. every time we do this. Mm -hmm. Guess what? They're going to do it like a hundred times a week. Mm. I agree. I agree. I mean, one trip could, you know, change the economy of the could earth. Change the balance of our world economy. <coughs> I mean, but think, uh, but think but, but is, that much. But is it possible that the audience thinks that because it's privatized, those guys will hog it for themselves and create some kind of kingdom? Yeah. Well, they already but, have. But I just want to say just that in case you, have, you didn't know yeah. Elon Musk is slated to become the first trillionaire. Ever. Uh, okay, like I just... this year, before the end of the year. So, to, to hear me out for this second. So Trillion. imagine if the... the ima you must be thinking, well, we can't leave it in the hands of one man because he'll make a mess of it or he'll take advantage or hide it from the rest of the population. You really think that the governments are going to do anything different? No. As a matter no. of fact, Elon Musk will have more empathy for us than anyone in these government groups. I couldn't agree more. As much as I think that Elon's a little kooky and crazy and whatever, I, I, I personally, I, I think he's kind of cool. Yes. Um, and and overall, I like him. And overall, I think he's a bit of a megalomaniac mm -hmm. and could turn into a Bond villain, like, overnight. Um, I mean, in, he really He will could. still have more empathy for us than the groups but in the government. But it's still better than Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer. Well, it's not even them, but the hidden, uh, the hidden group... Of the government, you know, and I'm going to do a show about this. Uh, Dinesh did a show about this. I've worked in government for a Dinesh long time. Uh, D'Souza. Never heard of him. And uh, I just want to say that people, uh, when you understand the inner workings of government, of who really runs the show, it's quite surprising and almost unbelievable, you know? Um let, let me just add this one little thing here real quick. Mm -hmm. uh, the Russian Space Agency uh, targeted in cyber attack, uh, June 29th, 2022, Wall Street Journal there. Uh, the Russian Space Agency website was hit by a cyber attack by posting satellite images and coordinates of the White House and the Pentagon on the Russian website, and it completely what screwed possibly, things up. What could possibly and then be was wrong hit by that? a DDoS attack, which had flooded the system with all of this stuff. I, I would have only imagined I mean, the, uh, the DDoS attack was probably um, originated from us. Um, oh, interesting. You know, I mean, interesting. You, you think thought. about it. What, what 
This, Denial of service is flooding the other website. This is the cat and mouse Cold War game that has been going on between Russia, China, and the United States for years. Since uh, God, uh, for how long now? I mean, I personally have. It's nothing new, with man. Chinese hackers hacking my email server uh, back in like 1998. Good point. Okay, they've been our enemy in s the cyberspace forever. Okay. Agreed. And both of them, both of them, Russia and China, all they're interested in is messing with us, taking our, our technology down, and propping their own technology up. Disrupting and taking what they can and, and rebuilding childish. themselves. I mean, the way they go, they go about it, I mean, taking down a, uh, taking down a website uh, that's got like some pictures of the White House on it. Like, Okay. Like, what the heck is what that you, about? What were you planning? So, uh, uh, no, it's a mockery. This was supposed to be a mockery and a denial of service attack. It was just a mockery of the whole thing. You know, you know could, could you imagine, like, I just want to bring up something right now. Do you realize, does our audience realize that for the last 22, 23 years, there have been people living in space right. every single day? Yes, without, yes. Without, like, a chain unbroken for t almost 23 years. Yeah, yeah. There has been people living in space constantly for the past 23 years. I mean, when you think about that for a second, that we've we've had this like ongoing chain that has not been broken. Um, of it's part of our not, normal lives. Li it, it's, we've gotten used to it, right? Yeah. But think yeah. about like what our parents would think about that, mm. or our grandparents. Unbelievable. 22, 20, going on 23 years of human beings constantly living in space without without a, without a, without a break. I mean, right, they become used to it. They've done a lot of science experiments to see what happens in that. It was only that. 1969 that like we got men to the moon for the first time. Well, there's a, yeah. Yes, we did go to the moon with people, and that wasn't staged. Maybe, maybe, maybe they most likely went to the moon. And the but, Earth but, is round. But what we saw on television was a fantastic production. Well, yeah, it was a fantastic production paid for by the U.S. taxpayer. But what I'm saying is that is that isn't there a larger risk in filmmaking? by doing it live the way I'm doing it, right, compared to post-production. They didn't have the luxury of doing post-production. I think they had the technology to create a wonderful film. I think... I think and then it took place, but they couldn't tell you what's really happening, when, but they showed us this film while something else was really happening. When it happened, I mean, you think about it, they couldn't go post on this, and I'll tell you why. Because there was a nine trillion ton or however big the Saturn V rocket yes, is. Yes, yes, big It's like humongous, like Statue of, not Statue of Liberty, I mean, right, it's a tremendous State Building Space but, rocket yes. that blasted off from Cape Canaveral and at the time it was called Cape Kennedy, right? It was, sure, sure, but the point is that... everybody saw that. Okay. okay, that doesn't mean that the video we saw of the landing wasn't a fantastic Hollywood production, even though no, a real no, landing no. took place. No, no, the real landing took place. What we saw in 1969 was the real landing as it happened live. In my opinion, logic prevails to Ed Notella nope, that nope, there's nope, a nope, possibility... Nope. Watch this, guys. <laughs> that, ...that it did happen, of course, and real things happened... But what we saw on TV was a <laughs> fabulous, fantastic television It was production. a fabulous, fantastic thing. It was called American Ingenuity on display right before your eyes. And if we screwed up, that was going to be on display too. It could have been a, a an incredible to test to prove how media can control the public. We got, And as a matter of fact, the Orwell thing proved how people are losing their minds with this fake UFO radio show so what uh, that that orwell thing george where, orwell, george orwell yeah, yeah, he um, the actor. george orwell the actor who made that radio show that freaked everybody out there was a real uh invasion coming orson out. wells orson wells i apologize Not george orwell george orwell wrote 1984 yes, like, yes. he he had made this show in the 1950s right and everybody freaked out from it yeah 
So wasn't that a, a predecessor to no, making this what, fabulous no, TV think, show about landing on the moon? Everybody will just believe it, it, it anyway? Wasn't, it wasn't a fantastic TV show about landing on the moon. It was actually us landing on the moon. And I'm did, sure we landed on the moon. We did. I'm sure we did. We did it seven times. I'm sure we landed many more times than that, including Hitler. Well, I don't know about that, but you know, I, I'm, I'm sure Hitler would have wanted to if he ever got done with Russia. Okay, yes, but, yes. You know, I, I think he was like busy doing other things. Like, but the, uh, the, the, the Nazi bell could have possibly reached incredible heights that we're bell, not aware. Yeah, yeah. The Nazi bell was more sophisticated. Something that was never found. Yes. You know, and something that was never substantiated. Okay, We've got pictures and drawings. I can make pictures and drawings of stuff too. Okay, Doesn't mean it exists. But somebody I was mean, a scientist. What I'd like to find that the Nazis took is the Amber Room. Okay, because okay, yes. we know the Amber Room existed yes. in St. Catherine's uh, yes, uh, good point. summer uh, castle. Good point, good point. Okay, we know the Nazis took it. We know it ended up at, at that castle in uh, in Bavaria, yes. which was bombed by the Allies and, and leveled. Okay, okay, yes, yes. And no one ever found one single piece of amber, ever. You know, where did that go? Mm -hmm. You know, I, You know, the bell... The bell was fantasy. The bell was something that, like, a bunch of guys that hung out with uh, uh, Verna yes, Von Ver Braun, Braun. They, they were like, wow, wouldn't it be cool if we could do this? And they drew some pictures. But it was never But created. it was discovered that Ver uh, Verna Von Braun's um, drawings came up later and they were used. So is it possible he had uh, done something uh, where... Uh, he's people are texting me. Sorry, okay. where he literally had these things drawn up and they were used secretly and funded. Well, we know we wouldn't we know. We know would never was, know. We don't know if they were funded. We don't know if they were real. How do we know that thing that's flying around being tracked is in stolen technology that was originally invented by him? We don't even know. We don't so, even know. That, that's a lot that's of the speculation. Truth. There, a, lot a lot of, of speculation. speculation. But, I, I I agree with you that could could that be? It, I, as a, as a scientific uh, with a scientific mind, I have to offer that up as being a possibility. Is is it a possibility that we never made it to the moon? That's a possibility. Is it a possibility that the Earth is flat? It's a possibility, and it's not really that. Uh, but but Rick, let, let me just say about the moon. I believe me and the others believe yes, moon landings did occur. It makes perfect logical sense. With human that beings. With human beings. And, and go-karts. And, and those little go-karts. And I think that that... Uh, but I do believe that what was shown on television was a fantastic television show because they couldn't really show what was happening on the moon. They had to make a film out of it. I just want to bring something up. Do you remember when the, the, the crew of Apollo 11 mm -hmm. came back and was interviewed? Yes. Um, we had... Uh, uh, Aldrin, we had Armstrong, okay, and we had uh, Ed. Uh, what was his name? The other guy, the third guy. Ed. Um, God, I can't remember his name. Okay. okay. Either way, either way. Okay. Did you see the look on their faces? Yes, they like. They like like they saw a ghost. Well, listen, like you run somber them, as hell. You run them through a wind tunnel before you put them on camera. No, no, Come no, on, no. man, like, that's like easy. They saw some stuff that they couldn't explain. And they knew it was aliens, and they knew it was something. Like I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And they the look on they're going. We were told we can't talk. The look about on their face thing. to me said, "We're pulling the biggest scam on the world," and I'm sorry. That was the look I on their don't face. I saw. That. I don't believe that. I you believe, believe they were like, "Oh, we I went through they, hell and back." Okay. I believe they saw alien crafts up there. I believe they were told not to talk about it. Yes. I believe after what happened with Eisenhower, remember that the. the uh, uh, what was it? Yes. That alien that he supposedly yes. met with? Yes. I believe that since Eisenhower going forward, and maybe even before that, mm. that governments have been in touch with alien uh, uh, yes. people. Yes. Um, tech, uh, been introduced to technology. It's kind of funny how Roswell happens. Yes, all of a sudden. And then all of a sudden we go from vacuum tubes to transistors to, to microprocessors. Like super fast, like super fast. In like three weeks. Yes, totally, you know, totally. I mean, in the timeline, you know, all of a sudden, you know, we, we went from steam engines to getting to the moon in like a half a generation. Yeah. How the hell does that happen? 
Well, well, we'll look at it now. I mean, we've blasted into the future even further with the James Webb Telescope. Yes, we did. So, um, so the space race forward? is on. Uh, Russia, America, China, which had a large collaboration, is sort of disjoining. Everyone's doing their own thing. Mm -hmm. There's different explanations. You can add your own political whatever on top of it. I like but, the big type, by the way. Oh, thank you yeah, very much. It really was easier great. for us to read awesome that way. Font. But uh, so here comes the James Webb Telescope to ultimately replace the Hubble Telescope. And we're already making incredible well, revelations beyond the space program that's taking place already. So remember, the James Webb Telescope is not an optical scope. Okay. It, it, it's an infrared uh, scope. Can you explain that? What do you mean? Well, we see the Roy G. Biv uh, you know, spectrum of, of light, okay, uh, from ultraviolet to infrared, mm -hmm. okay? Um, like just a after our visible light, we go into ultraviolet on the violet side and infrared on the red side. And our eyes can perceive what's inside of this very small band bandwidth of light. Your, your microwave oven works by light. Microwave is Good light. Point. So you, you, it's light your eyes can't perceive, but it's light that will cook your food. X-rays are light. Um, gamma rays are light. It's just different forms of the same thing, okay? So what, what the James Webb Telescope is, is something that can see infrared, meaning you can see like, like parts of the spectrum that our eyes can't see. And then computers can interpret that and turn it into visible light, right? So you, what you're seeing up on the screen right there with the, uh, these, these distant galaxies, we're, we're talking about galaxies that formed 300 million years after the Big Bang. In the big scheme of things, that's like, like you getting to work at 8 o'clock in the morning and that galaxy was uh, created by the time before you even had your first bathroom break. Mm -hmm. All right? that is like, that's a long, long, long time ago. Um, so just in this article alone, they're talking that web... Uh, Webb's images reveal a wealth of galaxies glimmering into the distant cosmos, appearing just a few hundred million years ago after the Big Bang, 13.8 billion years ago. Now, we know how old the universe is. Hubble taught us how old the universe was. We thought it was 14.2 for the longest time. Mm. Hubble taught us that it was 13.8. Okay. And what's the difference? It's a huge difference. You know, we're talking billions of years here. Um, the difference is by what happened in the, believe it or not, the way they measured, t the way we measure time, uh, uh, scientists measure time at the point of the Big Bang in what's called Planck time. And in other words... Planck time. Planck time is, is a measurement of time that could be broken down, like one Planck time is a billionth of 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 a second. Okay. Okay? So... Because things were happening so fast at the point of the Big Bang, because it wasn't really a Big Bang, it wasn't big and it didn't bang, okay? But the, that, that point of expansion, so many things happen in, in fractions of a fraction of a second. We had to come up with a new scale of time to measure things by. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's as crazy as that sounds. So 13... 0.8 billion years ago, supposedly, expansion happened, right? And if you go one second into the future, because, I mean, think, remember, time didn't exist before the Big Bang. It, time wasn't a thing. So if you go one second forward, the universe is expanding at several thousand times the speed of light. Now, how could that possibly be? The universe is expanding. Nothing can go faster than the speed of light, right? The space can go faster. Uh, matter can't go faster, it turns into energy. But in the first Planck seconds of, of the Big Bang, there was no matter. It was just energy. So it can travel as fast as it wants because it's already energy. Kind of hard to wrap your head around. Mm. Um, so when we say that like we're looking at images of galaxies that happened like a couple of hundred thousand years or a couple of million years after the Big Bang, you have to remember a lot of stuff happened before that happened. Mm. You know, you had. Uh, it's hard to visualize these timelines, of course. It was very, very, very difficult, it, and and it's it's hard for like us regular people to wrap our heads around stuff like that. It took a hundred 
million years for an atom of hydrogen to be created. I mean, that... We can't wrap our heads around it, exactly. Yeah. And, and then it took another couple of million years for helium to be created. Right, right. You know? And then they got together, and, they, you know, and they, they, gravity pulled them in, and it created a star. And it took a couple of hundred million years for a star to get created. And then the first... And we're seeing evidence of that. This yeah, is yeah. not fabricated. We're seeing this with you, these telescopes. You think about it. By the time our sun came into existence with mm. that, uh, a couple of billion years ago, yeah. the universe yeah. was already matured. Yeah. You know, it was already yeah. happening. Things were happening all over the place. Yeah. It just didn't include us. Um, yeah. Let's jump in here. So what are the four things we've taken and learned from this experience so far um great article here right so um four revelations from the james webb telescope about <laughs> these galaxies literally in the last 30 days right yeah yeah that there's an awful lot of galaxies way out there there's a lot more than they originally thought there would be yeah, and, and the thing is, I mean, remember, does, does anybody remember the Hubble Deep Field image? Yes. Okay. Right, right. So basically what the Hubble did is it took a, uh, if you held a quarter at arm's length, we saw, with ground-based telescopes, we saw nothing in this little patch of sky that covers this quarter that we have at arm's length. Right, and we saw so much. And it did a, it, it did an, a, a long exposure uh, photograph of this area of the sky that we saw nothing, you know, before that, and what we found was ten thousand galaxies. Right. Okay. So what? The, what year was that? What was oh that? Oh God, it was like nineteen. No, it was nineteen ninety-two. Oh, ninety-two. Okay, got it. Okay. Okay. And so, so now the first thing the, wet, the, the the James Webb Telescope does is it takes like the same deep field image, and instead of a quarter at arm's length, it's a grain of sand at arm's length, and it says, "How about if we look?" into that same area of the deep field and take like one fiftieth of a quarter size or one one hundredth of a quarter size and let's look at that. Hmm. Okay? And it came up with ten thousand more galaxies. You know, that endless, we endless, before. endless. I mean so in, in other words, the the universe we we have to think about the universe as the observable universe because we can only observe what light has gotten to us. Um, we can't observe what light, you know, the, the expansion of the universe mm. that we cannot see. There is a horizon which we cannot see past yes. because the, the light just could not ever get here. The way the universe is expanding, the galaxies over on that side of the universe can't possibly ever send us the light because it's expanding so far away from us yes. and so far uh, so fast that the light will never make it to us and we'll never see it. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's kind of rough to wrap your head around, too. So definitely a lot more galaxies than originally imagined by the Hubble. Interesting stuff that, yeah. uh, that, uh, that that's a good point. The next one's really interesting to me. Many galaxies are competing for the most distant title. So I guess one of the discoveries they've made is the original images they saw were actually different galaxies kind of in front of behind each other. And the the depth they're getting is expanding the amount of galaxies they're seeing. Well, when we look into the into the deep dark past, because that's what we're doing here with images that we're looking into the into the uh, universe out there. We're really looking into the past. Um, the light that we're seeing is we're seeing the light from a star or a galaxy as it was, you know, billion years ago or billions of years ago. Okay. We don't know what it looks like today. We have no way of knowing what it looks like today because that light took that long to get here. What's interesting about all this, and I mean, okay, so great. Something is like a gazillion light years away from us. What does it mean to us? Here, here's what it means to us. What we're learning about is we're learning about this, uh, the things that are creating warped perceptions of that light coming to us the dark matter that's in the way of seeing those galaxies. We're learning more about that. Right now, 80% of our galaxy, of our universe, is made up by something called dark energy. Right. We have no idea what it is. That's why we call it dark energy. Not because it's evil, but because we don't know what it is. Now, 
so much. Well, that dark energy, uh, it, you're seeing more of it now. Look at the depth perception that we're getting now. That's right. There's exponential dark energy between what we saw, dark so, matter, rather, between what we think was together compared to distant well, the, planets. The dark energy is what's moving the universe into, into expansion, right. and, and, and the universe is expanding more and more as, as time goes on. And that's the dark energy part of it. The dark matter part of it, that's, that's the weird thing. We're looking, we're seeing that galaxies that we see far away are kind of lensed because something with mass is in the way of that galaxy and it's getting distorted. Kind of the way like if you put a straw in a glass of water yeah. and it looks like the straw's broken. Right, you know, right. We're seeing that it's kind of It's distorting it. So there's some kind of matter in between us and that thing that we don't know what it is. And we're seeing the results of the, the mass of that matter, but we don't know what's causing it. We don't know what it is. That's why we call it dark. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. When we start to understand that stuff, the dark matter and the dark energy, when we start, to, and, and that's also stuff that they're learning about, you know, at the Large Hadron Collider, learning about like you know the inner structures of atoms and things like that. That's when we're going to get closer to the, my favorite subject, gravity plating. Interesting, and, and, gravity and, plating. And hyper uh, hyper light speed velocity spaceships will start to understand how to warp space-time in a way that we don't have the technology to do right now. We don't have an understanding of space and time. But these are all predecessors to That's getting That's right. There. They're That's all right. predecessors. It's like we're there. learning how to make an airfoil. You know, it, yes, it, it, right. on, a, on a, the wing of an airplane, the top of the wing is got more space than the bottom of the wing. So as that thing thrusts forward, the, the difference between how air goes the under the wing and above the wing creates lift. Why? Because it's physics, yeah. okay? And it's something we didn't understand prior to, like, you know, in the 18, 1700s. We didn't understand that stuff. And some people figured it out. I mean, Galileo actually figured it right. out. Right. But, you know, to put it to practical use, you needed an engine to bring you forward, to bring air across the airfoil, which is the wing. And, and that's how planes fly. That was something that only, like, let's say 150 years ago did not exist. Mm-hmm. And now we take it for granted that people can fly back and forth to Europe in a couple of hours. You know, on the supersonic jet, you know, they, they got, what, from Paris to New York in an hour and a half? Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. Imagine telling that to someone who lived in the 1700s. Well, you're seeing it here. This James right. Webb telescope it's is taking, an extreme advancement it's, forward. It, it's taking us with technology forward that we don't really even yet understand. Yet. Great, exactly. Um, so definitely a lot more galaxies out there than originally imagined. The detail is showing us some uh, exponentially higher numbers. There. I'm really interested in what the James Webb Telescope is telling us about exoplanets. I mean, your article yes, they're mentions talking the about, Trappist system. Exactly. So I wanted to bring that up, actually. Seven possible Earth-sized worlds? Trappist system, and it's not too far away in the light year schema. Like, like what, like what uh, 20 light years away? Yeah, light years away? yeah, exactly. 24 light years 24 away. 24 light years away. Okay, wasn't that and far And it's off. called the Trappist, T-R-A-P-P-I-S-T system. And, uh, yeah, they're saying that that guy is uh, possibly um, got seven different... Uh, uh, what is it called? Potentially habitable worlds. Yeah, you know, I mean, I really believe that the, the, the uh, uh, James Webb Telescope is going to help us find the place where we can call home number two. Yes. Um, and then it becomes a matter of how do we get there. Yeah. Yeah. You know? um, and how do we land? I mean, think about how hard it is to just, you know, to bring land something up. back from space here. Think about doing that like, you know, 40 light years away, yeah, yeah. okay? That, you know, that gets a little dicey. You know, you, you've got aircraft carriers catching, yeah. you know, or, or stuff that lands in the ocean. We ain't going to have aircraft carriers over there. Let's, let's just bring it back for a second for our audience. Um, some early galaxies are surprisingly complex. Mm-hmm. Um, is the third item that uh, was yeah. a big discovery by our, by our, by our telescope here. Um, the deep field images found a surprisingly large number of distant galaxies that are shaped like disks. Yeah, this was very a bit, interesting. This was Hubble a, didn't see that. This was a bit, well, Hubble couldn't look back in time that far. Right. And our understanding of galactic uh, structures, we know, we know by looking at what we saw that galaxies had a you know a, a, a way of 
getting more and more complicated, like kind of like their own entropy. Mm -hmm. Like they would get more and more complicated, and then they would die off, and then they become less complicated. We found out through the through the web uh, images is that our knowledge of gal uh, galactic lifespan is wrong. We're mm -hmm. completely wrong, which is the greatest thing in the world. That's a big science, deal, man. That's a huge deal. When you find out you're wrong in science, that's your best thing. I know, right? You it's know? like, yeah. yeah. Now we now we learned something. Now we, we, we found something we didn't expect. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we're figuring out that galaxies were formed, like fully formed, really, really uh, Early. earlier than we thought. Yes. And that's, that changes the way we think about like how galaxies formed in the first place. Um, well, the concept is that if galaxies were formed earlier, life forms that were human-like must have existed exponentially before then. Oh. So I just, I just want to say something Any interesting. Life. There was a little trick somebody done, did on the internet. So this is a picture yep. they took from the James Webb Telescope. There was a jokester, I think it was Ohio, who took a picture of his... Ki granite kitchen countertop. Yeah, and said almost the same. And said that it was the James Webb telescope, and like he got like forty million hits. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Very interesting. Well, uh, what's interesting about this image, and and it, it it bears to mention, when you look at this image, look at the swishy, swirly kind of images that you see. Um, now you've got that star to the upper left of the that's a star yes. with the points coming off of it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. look right underneath it to the left a little bit mm -hmm. you've got a kind of swish of and it's got two parts mm -hmm. to it mm -hmm. right that's one galaxy but there is so and, and there's another one to the right of it just underneath where you've got these two two images it looks like it looks like a mirror image of itself okay that's one galaxy and the reason why it looks like that is because of dark matter. And this is how we're learning about dark matter. The further we can study this stuff, the better we, we can understand it. We're not, even, we're not even close to getting there yet, but we are getting there. And I believe that within the next generation, next 20 or 30 years or so, we'll have a pretty good handle on dark matter and Right after that, I believe dark energy will come into our purview. Um, I think that dark matter is something that will probably come first. Interesting. Interesting. Wow, incredible. And lastly, closer galaxies are smaller than expected. That is very interesting. Smaller galaxies are... Uh, closer galaxies are smaller than expected. Uh, when when uh, the astronomer at the University of California, Santa Cruz, compared the Hubble images uh, of galaxies with what the James Webb telescope showed them, uh, the infrared wavelengths detected the web. Most of the massive galaxies looked much smaller than they did at the Hubble uh, telescope. Well, very interesting. So the depth perception is making us realize yeah. that. You know, they're not that far away, and they're actually smaller, not this huge galactic thing. Very interesting. So we could have galaxies speeming with life, teeming with life. Well, let's just face it that, like, any life that exists in another galaxy we'll never be able to communicate with, we'll never be able to visit. You know, that's the only life that we can possibly ever visit is in the Milky Way galaxy. Unless someone comes through with like some breakthrough way of like slipstreaming like like on the TV show Andromeda where you know you can basically go from galaxy to galaxy. Um, that's you know maybe that's the secret. You know maybe that's once you go past the speed of light it doesn't matter how far it is. You can just get there by pointing to it and heading towards it. Sure, but the idea of studying these other galaxies is to see what happens in our galaxy because we're inside of it. Right. So watching others will tell us what could be happening to ours. Absolutely, absolutely. But I, I find it interesting that there's trillions of galaxies out there. And the truth is, if we had, uh, let's say we had a, a spaceship that can go uh, 500 times the speed of light, we'd still never make it to Andromeda. Right. We'd, we'd never make it there. There has to be some kind of advanced wormhole. It, it's it's got to be some like kind that. of... It'd have to be inter... something that we just like... It's completely science fiction. Yeah. 
Right, but some place where we could travel from this galaxy to the other one in moments. Like right now, th there's there's some good science out there that explains how we could do a warp drive, how we can bend space time, bend space time in front of us, bend space time behind us, and move through space time faster than light. There's nothing in general relativity that says we can't do that. Correct. Einstein took the famous experiment with the balloon and put his fingers through it and said that space can be bent where these points meet That's right. and you're from one end of the galaxy to the other one. The problem with that is that it takes an infinite amount of energy to achieve. As far as we understand the physics right now, we can't make infinite energy. Infinite energy is like something that, like it's, not even the we universe don't have can create it anymore. Exactly, so we don't so, know how to get there. So we've got a lot of a lot of hurdles to get yeah. over. But I got to tell you, I saw a couple of documentaries about the build out of the James Webb Telescope. What an incredible yeah. uh, part by part they they just did incredible, that is an highly detailed piece of build out. It really is, and it requires such extreme sensitivity in order for the light and the mirrors to properly and give think you. Think about where it is. You know, I mean, it's, it's beyond traveling. the moon. It's you know, it's see like you later. a Lagrange point between the, the like tri tri triax. It's like outside of that. Yeah, it's like it's outside of the Earth's Earth in the orbit of the Moon around yeah. the Earth. Yeah, and it's beyond behind the Moon somewhere. Yes, it's just to be able to manage that thing out there. Yeah, incredible. I mean, oof. Crazy, crazy technology. Going uh, take a look at this last article we have, which is really interesting. In just two weeks, the James Webb Telescope is reshaping astronomy as we know it. Right yep. in the days after the telescope started delivering data, the astronomers reported incredible discoveries, much deeper uh, detail with with a significant higher impact of what's out there. And it's going to change the way we look at look at the space in general and what we think we've known about these galaxies. It, it, the one thing that that hits me is that you know we the images that we got from Hubble were so jaw dropping. Yeah. I mean, the incredible pillars stuff. of creation. How cool was I mean, that? The new ones look incredible. I know. Oh my I gosh! Know. It's like now we're seeing different. Like, now it's like we upgraded the camera. And it's, yes. it's completely blowing us away as far as the detail. We're going to have the same effect on the show. We're going from a Logitech Streamcam to a Canon M50 Mark II. Well, talk about talk about. So talk like about upgrading. a James Webb telescope upgrade. It's going to happen right here on CyberMath. You'll be able to see the atoms inside <laughs> of my eye. So, yes, yes. I'll have a whole <laughs> show about how I'm choosing to buy all this crazy stuff. But um, very interesting, you know. Um, they're really seeing all this extreme detail that it's much bigger than Did ever you before. See that they discovered the new largest star? Yes, let's talk the about Stevenson that. The Stevenson star? Let's talk about the Stevenson star. Interesting to know. This, this blows my Days mind. Away. This, this is like brand new data, the last this, two weeks. Yes, this blows my mind. The biggest star that we knew about, I mean, like you think about it, that Betelgeuse is one of the biggest stars we know about, yes. right? It's like immense. Okay, and it's about, what about uh, twenty light years away? Um, not Something that like far that. Away. Yeah, I and don't know how we know this, but I've retained this definitely information. Definitely within, like, and if that thing is pointing at us when it finally goes supernova, yeah, if its done. pole is pointing at us, we're screwed. Yes. I mean, like, really, like the Earth is just going like blowing out a candle. <laughs> You're done. Um, and if that happens, it happens. And we, how about this? We wouldn't know it for like what twenty years. Really? Yeah. Yes, right. It exploded. We wouldn't see that light. Exactly. Okay. So the Stevens... Now, now, if you took the sun and replaced it with Betelgeuse, right, it would probably go out to, like, the orbit of, like, uh, like the asteroid belt. Right, right. Okay. okay. Which is, Not like, far. really freaking huge. Okay. Okay? The Stevenson star goes out to the orbit of Saturn. Okay. Okay? Right. When you think about this, I want you to wrap your head around this. To go from the Earth to Jupiter is like this far, and then to go from Jupiter to uh, Saturn is that same distance. Okay, it's twice as far. So to say that, like you know, the the orbit of Jupiter is this big, the orbit of Saturn is like bigger than my arms could show you. Yes. Okay. 
and that's how big the Stevenson star is. Mm -hmm. Could you imagine, like, just wrap your head around, like, how freaking big this so, thing is? So then we have two points of measure, which I think confuses a lot of people. I talked about mm -hmm. this. You have the physical distance, and then you have the time that light reaches us. Right. And I think that's a, a, a very good point to make here, you know? Um, a newfound galaxy dubbed Glass 213, which is so far away that we could see it appears 300 million years after the Big Bang. Hold on. Okay. Now holds the record for the earliest known galaxy. That record is not expected to last very long because they're going to find new things. Now they're going... It's not expected to last too long. Exactly, yeah. because they're going to figure out gonna other ones. Them. Yeah. Now they're going back in time, right? So they're going 400 years, 300 years is closer to the Big Bang. 300 million so, years. 300 million yeah. years. They're trying to go back to the beginning of time, if you will, or or that. So a 400 uh, million year galaxy is much younger than a 300 million year and galaxy. And it's funny because we do have we right? do have the baby pictures from the early universe, from the right. from the early remnants of the Big Bang. But it's supposed to say a 200... The cosmic background. A 200 million year after the Big Bang would be even an earlier galaxy than the 300 and 400. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think that's an By important point, how yeah. they're measuring this. So they're measuring distance, and then um, when it appeared, when we saw the light after the Big Bang. So big stuff there, you know? You know, the, 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 one of the images that I'm, um, like, I, I always showed my classes yeah. you know, when I was teaching computers, the cosmic radiation background. Yes, right? the cosmic they, radiation background. Now, you could hear the cosmic radiation background. <laughs> you want to hear it? Go into your dad's car, okay, because your car is not going to have it. <laughs> Turn Good on your point. AM radio, okay, and listen to the background static on that AM radio. That Part of that, what you're hearing, is the background static of the Big Bang right there on your AM radio, amplitude modulation, Right to you, right now. So when you turned on your radio and you heard the white noise, part of that static came from. Yep. Oh man, wow! Okay, people and don't realize that. And there's a picture that. of it. I don't know if you can pull it up, mm -hmm. but you could do a, a Google image search and pull up the cosmic background radiation photograph. Okay. Okay, and that is basically a, a panoramic view of what the what the, the Big Bang looked like. Okay minutes after the Big Bang. Now, we've got this gap in between what was way back then and where we see galaxies. You know, that's why there's a hundred million year gap. Um, the cosmic radiation background is what the universe looked like. Give me like. those keywords. Sir, cosmic yeah. radiation background. And then uh, click on images. Cosmic got radiation background. Got it, I found background. it, yes. Yep. Okay. Got it. And you, you do an image search, right? Uh, and you'll see the images come right up, mm -hmm. and there you go. The the uh, the second second one down to the left, right to the left. This one, right? That one. Uh -huh. That's the one I want to show the, everybody. That the darker spots of that is where the universe was a little hotter. That that's like that, imagine taking a camera and like rolling it around 350, 360 degrees, uh -huh. and doing that all around in a circle. That's basically what that is. Okay, there's a WMAP telescope that got that image. Um, and what it basically is, is like this background noise in the universe. Okay. That's basically the, the infant baby picture of the universe. Um, it is what the universe really looked like. The universe didn't have form. It didn't look like anything. It, mm -hmm. you know, time and space didn't really exist. But th what they discovered... Uh, in, in this radio telescope in New Jersey back in the 60s was this noise that they couldn't get out of their, you know, they, they were listening for radio signals. There was this, like, static that they couldn't get rid of. At first they thought it was pigeon droppings. So they went pigeon into... Pigeon droppings? Yeah, it's called the, really? Horn the Horn Telescope in New Jersey. So what they did is they went into the, into the telescope and they cleaned out all the pigeon droppings and they got rid of the pigeons, right? Huh. And that noise was still there. Got it. And... Then they thought it was might have been something the Russians were doing. Maybe the Russians launched, launched something and like blew something up out in space, and that's mm -hmm. a residual noise from that. Nope, it wasn't that either. What they discovered was the cosmic radiation background of the Big Bang, which still resonates today. And when we listen to it, that's what it takes to form it. That's what it looks like physically. 
Interesting. So that, Interesting. that's the universe's baby picture. Got it, got it. But uh, that's a pretty blurry image there. Yes, it is. And uh, what's the James Webb Telescope going to tell us? Or how is this going to be updated well, by the James Webb Telescope? Well, see, what the Webb Telescope, the Webb Telescope isn't listening for radio waves. Okay. So this is a radio wave uh, image. Radio so wave what, image. So what the Webb Telescope is going to basically mm. do is going to basically look back and say, okay, it's going to grab an image of like an, a really ancient, ancient galaxy. Okay. What it's going to look like. This, this is the Horn Telescope down there, uh, right down here. Oh, okay. Let and there's uh, another image to, right here, right underneath here. Try to pull that up again there. The, uh, uh, so it'll say like, okay, so the, the cosmic radiation background, that's radiation, that's, you know, that's radio waves, okay? And then... This galaxy that's formed, well, this, this happened like 300, 200 million years after that happened. Now, what happened in the meantime? Well, atoms were forming. <laughs> they, like yeah. nothing was there. The universe, the universe stayed like for, for the first 100 million years, stayed pretty boring, basically. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was it's not really working that good, but okay. Okay, but you, so like we, our you know viewers can look up the Horn Telescope in New Jersey. That's the the little tiny telescope where these. Uh, it's easier for me when I prepare for stuff. Sometimes I pull Google stuff. Quite up, a you know quite, You did great with that though. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> I had to say, you know, thumbs up. Good <laughs> Excellent. Good, good. Good. Props. Props to the images. Nice. Um, well, well, I, I guess I guess let's wrap up the show yeah. because we've talked about a lot of complicated stuff. But uh, the show is about what's happening in space. Obviously, a ton of money is being spent. Uh, countries are competing uh, even bigger than ever. And at stake is our communications grid. Now, I will say that how do I resolve this in my mind? Um, I resolve it in my mind by saying that we have to be able to um, live off the grid, have power, have ways where we're not dependent on cellular communication um, and have a way we're not dependent on the natural resources that are given to us so now that are going, taken for granted so are much. Are we going to invite a new uh, sponsor to the show, MyPatriotSupply.com? Yeah, well, I, I, mean, I mean, that's important. I, I mean, love them. Think about it. All the space activity... It bothered me for years to hear that there's a lot of space junk roving around, yep, and it yep. could literally come down at any point it's being supervised. Sure. They wouldn't tell us if it came down and hurt someone or what that was. Now they're actively fighting in space the same way we're fighting on Earth with cybercrime. Uh, I, the only solution I have is to prepare to live off-grid I, for uh, periods I, of time. I suggest anyone with an iPhone, because I don't think you can get the app on Android, but the iPhone has a uh, an app called Night Sky, okay, which is really cool. Yeah, we can see all the constellations, and you can see rocket bodies that really? are still floating around out there. Oh, you can see man, all of Elon really? Musk's uh, you know uh, uh, satellites. Really, the yeah. junk floating. Yeah, you can see all the oh, stuff. Oh man, out there. that's crazy. And zero in on the Hubble, zero in on the space station. Even it's even got the JW uh, James Webb Telescope on, like it'll show well, you. Will the where James it is. Webb Telescope unite humanity from our perception of d disconnection at this point? Oh hell no! Religion and and ideologies, you know. You, so there'll be another you're country. You're communist. You're socialist. You're capitalist. So it's never going to end. So there'll be a Russian space. Now, you know what will end? Telescope, a China one, and we'll all compete against each My other. My prediction. You know when it will end. You know when all the religions will come to realize like how insane they are that like they, they were sitting there like even talking about a man in the sky yes. and, and it'll all just come crashing down and yes. it'll all change in a nutshell. The minute our alien families out there come visit us, make their presence known irrefutably, like, like uh, the day the earth stood still, right? Klaatu just came down and said, hey man, we're here. Yeah, you can't. Well, it blows make a hole. Up. It blows a hole in everything we've yeah, been taught. Yeah. I mean, look, I I don't think I don't think it blows a hole in all religions, but like the, you, now. So you if a, they find you something take here, lines of the Bible and the Quran and and the and and uh, the different uh, holy books that are out there, and say this one line is not true. So every time we find an uh, a, an Earth potentially Earth habitable planet. It defies religion? No, no. But if we find life somewhere else, 
there's a line in the Bible that basically states that we're unique in the universe. Hmm. Now, 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 how about this? How about if you take the interpretation of that and say, yes, we are unique in the universe. That life that lives over here on is this a planet different unique. is a different unique kind of thing, right? Yes. So it doesn't make the Bible wrong. It's your interpretation of it. That's where I think the, 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 there's going to be... Right now, there are Christian yes. people, and I'm not saying anything wrong with... Of any listen, religion. You, be, you believe whatever you believe. Whatever exactly. makes you feel good and whatever lets you sleep at night. But there are people who actually believe the universe is 5,000 years old. Right. Yes. Okay? They believe that because they, they were read told. it in a book that was written by somebody that had very, very primitive scientific knowledge. Mm. So they believe it because yeah. it was written. Yeah. You know, yeah. To me, that's... I, We've learned so much. There, there's a huge thing out there on the internet To right be now. able people to stake with that. Arguing with people about the world being flat. Mm. If you think the world is flat... We have the overlay wrong. of media and greed that's creating a whole nother avenue to this. Um, I'm very happy this is taking place. I hope that the James Webb Telescope and all these space dealings um, create another ISS and there's a rejoining instead of a separation country by country. I think that if the aliens do ever show up, we better fight together. Anyway, yeah, uh, yeah. I just want to say thank you for joining us again. Yes, Hope everyone. you had a good time. Hope you had a good time. Thanks and, for joining uh, us. And see you guys next time. See you guys in the so next long. week. Peace. Bye-bye.